Most of the time that you work with Snowflake, you will be working within their normal UI, writing queries, looking at the database objects, stuff like that. But there's also another way that you can interact with it through the command line, and it's through a tool called Snow SQL. But a lot of times I think the command line can feel intimidating, and so we just avoid learning about it. But in today's video, I wanna share with you how you can easily install Snow SQL on your local computer, set all the configurations you need, and then start running some basic queries against your Snowflake instance. As I mentioned earlier, Snow SQL is a terminal application. So it's actually something we need to install. Therefore, the first thing we need to do is install it. We need to get this on our machine. So what we can do is if you're in the UI here, you can go to help, download, and it's the first one right here, client Snow SQL. And you have different options here. I'm going to go to the Snowflake repository and we'll go through these lists here. And depending on your machine, if you have Windows, you would download from here, Linux, Darwin would be for Mac users, so I'm going to do this for Mac. You can pick whichever one you'd like here. I see that this one at the time of this recording seems to be the most recently updated, so I'll go with this one and install this package. Now, once this is done, I'm, we'll open it up. And essentially what this is saying is it's gonna add it to your profile, to the bash profile, it kinda of depends on your runner. And we'll actually need to make a subtle adjustment once it's installed, which I'll show you, and hopefully it'll save you some time if you run into the same problem. Uh, but let's continue for now and we'll install should be pretty quick and here we see it gives you a successful message and it's also saying to you can test your connection by running this command here but also more importantly it added a config file to a hidden directory called dot snow sql and this is where we're going to be able to set our uh, configurations and our credentials and we'll, we'll work on this later so it says execute the following command to connect to snowflake so you can do this or you can run this it doesn't really matter um, so actually we'll just do this here, Snow SQL, or you can go and run it from the applications directly. And I wanna show you something here. So let's go ahead and open up a new terminal. And if I just run Snow SQL, typically you would expect it to work, but it's saying the command is not found. And this is a quick side note. If yours already runs here and you, it, it does run something, you could skip this next section. But if you're on Mac and you run in the same issue as me, I wanna show you something real quick. In my case, I'm running Bash, but the default is ZSH and we and it said it's going to install it into the profile, the bash profile, but I don't have one. And if I look at Z.Z profile and open this up here, we can see it added this path. This is really what's most important for this command to run, but it's not in the right profile for me. So what I need to do is create a bash profile. So the command I can run here. And again, this is if you're having the same problem, touch squiggly for your uh, root directory dash dot bash underscore profile. And what that will do is create this for us right here. Now let's open this up. And this is the real profile that we wanted to work. And so let's copy this over here so that our bash terminals understand where to look whenever we run the term snow SQL. Okay, let's try this again. Is quit, restart your terminal, Snow SQL. And here we're getting a little bit of a delay, which means it's running. I'm gonna close this. And this now is what we're talking about. So at this point, this means that it did run and we're gonna see something more pop up. We'll fix this error in a moment. But if you're getting this, that means Snow SQL is installed and we'll move on to the next part, which is handling our config file. Now to handle our configurations, if you remember, it said it installed a hidden directory, that's Snow SQL. So what you wanna do is go back to your root directory, similar to where we just made that bash profile. Now, if you're on Mac and you don't see it, the command you can run is shift command dot, and it'll toggle between the hidden and unhidden files. And here we can see dot Snow SQL. Here is the config file that we care about. So open this up. This is where we're gonna handle all of our configurations for Snow SQL. And as it calls out here very clearly, the password here is in plain text. Everything we're gonna do here is in plain text. So you definitely wanna be careful with this file. Don't version control it. This is strictly for your local connection. So the first thing I wanna to touch on is this error here. And we can fix this real quick by just doing, uh, scrolling down here, finding the log file. And instead of doing dot dot, get rid of one of the dots. Save this file. 
now run Snow SQL again, and it should get rid of that error for you. No errors this time, so at least that covers the first error. Now let's talk about the credentials. In this case, right here, these are all commented out. That's what these hashtags represent, the pound sign. And this is where we can determine a basically a default value. And if all you want to do is have one single value for your connections, this is where we can set it. And that's what we'll do here just to get us started. So we'll go through this one at a time. For the account name, it's just going to be this ID right here. So copy this. Region, we're going to do East US dash two dot Azure. We want all of that in here. Username, for me, it's going to be this guy up here, MJ Khan. Password, again, this is going to be plain text. So I will hide this for now, but when I do run it, I'll add my password in there. And for you, you just got to write it in. You can determine a default database, so it doesn't matter. It's up to you. For the sake of example, I'll just put one in here. I'll do analytics. Default schema, I'll do Mart's work with this right here. Default warehouse, I'll do developer. You don't necessarily need to set some of this stuff here. Really, it's these are the most important things, but we'll just set them for now. Role name, account admin, and then not going to worry about these. Now, in order for this to run, what you need to do is go through and remove all these pounds. Remove this guy right here as well. And just remove it so they're now in plain text, ready to be read from the file. There's some other things down here that we can talk about. We don't need to worry about that for now. We just, for the sake of this video, I just want to show you how to get this to run. So I have my password added here. I saved the file uh, and then just replaced it again with this. But now our config file is ready to go. So if we now go back and do snow SQL, it should read our config file and connect with our default settings here. So let's see what happens. So I do get an error here. And the reason is because even though I have this hidden, for example, I actually have to leave it in plain text for this to work. So I can't just leave it like this. So I'm going to add it and then I'll just hide it with uh, this screen here. So now that's added and let's run Snow SQL again. And this time I expect it to connect and it does. So we can see Snow SQL, here's the version and we are logged in as this user with this warehouse and all these credentials. So we're in, we're officially connected through Snow SQL and we can do whatever we want. So now let's start running some commands and see what we can do here. At this point now we're connected to Snowflake through Snow SQL and we can start running commands. You can assume that it's as if you're right in here because you have the same credentials. It's just a different way of working with it. So let's run a command. Let's run this same statement right here. We can actually copy this in my case, or, you know, you may have something else you can run. And I'm going to say select star from this March directory. You got to make sure to close it out with a semicolon because without that, I've run in scenarios where it just hangs and it doesn't realize that it's the end of a statement. So always make sure that you end a statement with a semicolon. And here it gives you the results. It's as if you're here in a nice format here. Now, common use cases here, I don't think you'll be running commands like this because that's probably a better use to be in the UI. But let's just do one sample thing just to, to see it happen. We'll do create database. And here it's giving us options, but I'm going to create a new database called Snow SQL Test and run that. It says it's successfully created. If we go back in here and refresh, here it is. Snow SQL test. So that was done through the command line. And you can imagine all the different things you can do. You can automate this however you want. There's a ton of documentation on Snow SQL. There's a lot more we can do here. This is just the very beginning of it. And I just wanted to show you how to get started, get your configuration set. Um, but from here, you're able to do pretty much whatever you want. There's a ton of things you can do. You can add variables. You can set different connections. We didn't really talk about connections, but you could, it says it can support multiple sessions, example, connections. So you could have, you know, various different things open and connect in different ways. So if we look back at our file, for example, here, we can see there's connections dot example, and it's just giving this right here. So perhaps you have a different account name, different user password. You could do this here and you could make uh, another one and call it uh, connections where to go connections dot whatever you want, another test, and then connect with it this way. But, and in that scenario, it would take the place of your defaults and instead use whatever you have here. So if you have different users for different purposes and you want to connect in different ways, the command to run that would be snow SQL 
dash C and then the name of your connection. So in that case, it would be um, my, in the case of this one here, it could be my example connection and it would look in your file and run that. So kind of out of the scope for right now, but I wanted to point that out. At this point, we're all set. We can exit and do exclamation point, exit to remove ourselves from that session. So some final notes here. I think this is a good use case for automation. You can automate scripts through the command line and however you want to use command line scripts in your process and connect directly through it. Remember that everything is stored in that file. So be very mindful of that uh, configuration file. And this is also a common way to load data, to run put commands and put data into your internal stages. So we'll have another video specifically on that, but this is how you would do that as well. Hopefully now you're much more confident with how to use SnowSQL, what it's all about and ways you can implement it in your own project and your own automations. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.